Hello and welcome to our Airflow Summit talk. You don't have to wait for someone to fix it for you. You might notice there are two faces on this slide and that were advertised, but there's only one bright shining face right here. That is because two speakers did contribute to this talk. One of them is me. My name is Leah Cole. I'm a DevRel engineer for Cloud Composer. I am a white woman with blonde curly hair and red lipstick, and I am coming to you from my home office in California. The other face on the slide is my wonderful colleague, Rachel. She is a developer, developer advocate based in London. Rachel wrote half of these slides and this story would be incomplete without her side of it. Unfortunately, she could not make it to the talk today, but she graciously agreed to let me speak on her behalf. And I promise that to do it justice, I will not try to do it in her British accent. As part of our lightning talk today, I'm going to run through Rachel's first contribution to the Apache Airflow project. I will discuss my own journey becoming a contributor and then a committer, and we'll give you some pointers on why and how you should get involved. So I'll start by talking a bit about why Rachel got involved in the first place. A few years ago, she joined Google as a cloud engineer within the professional services organization. And this is what she was working on when I first met her. She was helping customers migrate to the cloud. The first project that Rachel worked on with a customer was Cloud Composer. It is GCP's hosted managed version of Apache Airflow, which is why we're going to talk about it today. As she worked really closely with customers, they helped her experience firsthand some of the challenges that they faced. Uh, for example, Airflow has a lot of operators, which is awesome because it makes integrating with services super easy, but Sometimes you'll run into missing or incorrect documentation or lack of examples. And without those examples or with that kind of documentation, if that isn't showcasing how to make best use of an operator, without that clear guidance and example, it was really hard for Rachel's customers to ramp up on Composer and they weren't confident that what they were building was in line with best practices. At the time while she was in professional services, Rachel kind of always reasoned that she didn't have the time to fix or update those examples. And she thought, and these are her words exactly, ah, that's a shame. And she helped them work around the issue. And as she transitioned from professional services into her new developer advocate role, she did happily though, finally find the time and opportunity to help address some of those challenges, or at least to try. So, okay, where, where did she start? Rachel knew that she wanted to improve our open source documentation and some of the example DAGs, but she really had no idea how to make that happen. And like I was when she, when I first contributed to Airflow, Rachel was a little bit hesitant because she'd never contributed to open source before. And it's kind of intimidating for the first time. One thing that Rachel and I both learned quickly though, is that the Airflow community in particular is extremely friendly and welcoming to those who want to help out and contribute. So Rachel started by reaching out to a few people on Slack and they took the time to guide her through raising and submitting her first contribution. Her first step was installing Breeze, which is the local Airflow development environment if you haven't used it before. Getting this set up locally for the first time can sometimes be what put people off. And I think that was one of her barriers when she was in professional services because it, it seemed like a really big investment, but she realized that this is a one-off time cost. Uh, and once it's set up, then you're just good to keep locally developing your contributions in Airflow. And she also found some really helpful videos that other contributors have made that make it even easier to get free set up. So once Rachel got set up, she's ready to start having fun. She created some example DAGs and updated the relevant documentation. And she told me it was a good experience and that made me happy because her reasons were really similar to my own. Uh, she really loved getting to know people because she had to reach out to the community for help. Uh, she got coding again. Uh, I think in professional services, she wasn't coding as much as she is now in her advocate role. And so that's always fun. Um, and she learned a ton about Airflow in a short span of time, which is always good when you're learning that makes you better at your job. So anyways, once Rachel tested her code locally and was happy with it, she raised and submitted a PR. So now that she's gone through that process at least once, looking back, she does admit it is something she totally could have done while she was in professional services. So if any of you folks are out here in Google Professional Services or any others, you hear what Rachel's telling you. 
She just needed to get over that barrier of making the first contribution. If anyone is on the fence about that barrier, she and I both encourage you to do it. And please feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to talk to you about what it feels like. Okay, so besides the fact that she is my friend and colleague, another reason that Rachel is having me share her story today is that I was one of the community members that answered a lot of her initial questions and I was actually her PR reviewer. So at this point, I'll tell you what happened next. I'll tell you my side of the story. I got Rachel's PR and I went through it. I tried it out, gave some feedback. We iterated, it got merged, which was so exciting. This means that Rachel is officially what is called a contributor in the Apache Software Foundation universe. Okay, so but why was I the reviewer? I will tell you it is not just because I was her colleague, although because I was her colleague, it meant that I knew about it, but any, any committer could have been her reviewer. But let, let's rewind a little bit. About a year and a half ago, I was doing the same thing as Rachel. I was making PRs, fixing typos, fixing docs. Uh, I gave a few talks at Apache events and meetups back when we could do those kinds of things in person. Uh, and I was an organizer for last year's Airflow Summit as well as this year's. Uh, and in July of last year, right after the Airflow Summit, I was named what's called a committer to Airflow. That is this term. Uh, and I was, it was recognition for both the code changes that I made, but also for the non-code contributions. Uh, this is a term that is also used in the Apache Software Foundation universe, and you can read more about it on the Apache Software website. But we can talk a little bit now about what it means. So projects like Airflow that are a part of the Apache Software Foundation operate in what's called the Apache way. It's a loose definition that you can read more about on the Apache website, but I want to highlight two specific things, and they both emphasize community. The first is that projects are made up of a community of peers. This means that no contributor to Airflow is any more special than any other contributor to Airflow. It's not like these non-code contributors are of a lesser type of contributor than the code contributors. No, we are a community of peers. We are all working to make this project better. The second thing that the Apache way emphasizes is community over code. And in Airflow, I, I just think it's wonderful because I think it shows that even if Airflow code is the best code in the world, if we don't continue to foster a healthy, welcoming, and friendly community, it will not last. So the next step in the Apache software contribution universe is being a member of the PMC. I am not a member of the PMC, but it is something that you can read about. Every project has one, and there are PMC members all over this summit, and you should ask them what their experience on the PMC is like. In terms of contribution too, I do also want to acknowledge that earlier in the summit, someone did give a talk about making your first contribution to Airflow. So you should double check the schedule and watch the replay if you missed it. All right, now that we've talked about these next levels of contribution, I'm going to try to convince you why you should make your first contribution or second or third if you need a little bit of a hint as to why. Okay, so why should you get involved? Let's start with when. Is there something in Airflow that is driving you nuts? Is there a missing piece of info like Rachel dealt with? Is there a lack of examples and documentation? Is something wrong? Is there something inefficient in the code? Did you find a bug? This is the time, this is the best time because it means that you actually have a strong opinion about something that's going on. Okay, so you have this opinion. Now, what can you do to help with it? There are a ton of things. So you could fix that code inefficiency. You could try to fix whatever else is driving you nuts, those docs, whatever. Uh, you could file an issue. Fun fact, Rachel filed an issue while she was working on her PR and it was fixed by the time her PR was merged. And that PR was only open for a week. So that was not on me for slow review times, at least not this time. Uh, so thank you for folks who are fixing issues. And if you are not someone who is a code person, there are other ways that you can contribute to an open source project. We had folks who were helping run this event. We have folks who specialize in marketing who always help. We have folks who have designed our logos. We have folks who proofread documentation and blog posts. There are many ways that you can give back. And in case you need some more convincing, if, you're, if you want to be a little selfish, which sometimes we have to be to protect our time, let me tell you what's in it for you. If you are an Airflow user and it's part of your work to use Airflow, well, then improving Airflow is literally beneficial to your business operations. The better Airflow gets, the better your like time at work is going to be. 
Uh, contributing to Airflow is an opportunity to contribute uh, and collaborate with folks around the world. That in and of itself is complex and it's also really cool networking. There is technical complexity in some of our problems. There are super interesting use cases. You are being a good person by improving the greater good of Airflow developers and users everywhere by fixing things that drive you nuts. And in case you need more convincing, all of those things I just listed look super good on any performance review. And if you need me to help you phrase it in a way that's gonna convince your boss that it's important, let me know. I love doing that. So I hope that with all of this, Rachel and I have inspired you to give back to the Airflow community in whatever capacity plays to your strengths, and that we have convinced you that you do not have to wait for someone else to fix it for you. Thank you.